Sorry I'm late. Traffic was hell. All right, let's see what we've got. Thanks for coming in on such short notice. I know that it was kind of last minute, but I really appreciate you being able to meet and be flexible with this scheduling. We're going to get right into business. We're going to be uh, reviewing uh, past events and seeing if you are a good fit for this program. Any questions? Uh, no time for questions. Let's just move right into it. All right, well, let's start at the beginning. Um, looks here like you've got a standard childhood. A uh, couple of skeletons in that closet, though. Oh, Dad hit the model pretty hard growing up, huh? And that's not all he hit. All right, well, enough of that. Let's move on to education. Hmm. This says here you graduated from high school with a pretty good GPA and got into a pretty good college, too. Yes, but there were a few... Incidents. I'm surprised you didn't get kicked out. Some, uh, promiscuous behavior at parties. Well, you can't be blamed for what you don't remember. Hmm. Indeed. So after graduation, for some reason you didn't pursue a personal degree, you went into the military. A noble cause, for sure. Um, somewhat successful, it would seem. A few life and death incidences as well. squad getting wiped out in an ambush. That's pretty heavy, but what you did that day was pretty remarkable. You saved a lot of lives. You came back a hero after your tour, and that's something we really admire about you. So, you, you came back, and the PTSD was pretty bad, apparently. It didn't stop your wife from loving you anyway. You guys had a kid, that's pretty great, and you decided to funnel your career into the political sphere. Surprisingly enough, your PTSD didn't really manifest until you made it into the political sphere. Rather odd timing, don't you think? Well, at least you were very considerate, you know? Your wife never seemed to be bothered by your attacks, but the public eye felt a lot of sympathy for this bright new politician. <laughs> we get a lot of politicians here. So, that upward trajectory from small local officer all the way up to senator, that was an impressive ascent. Yes, but... There was little baggage that you acquired along the way. Drinking. What started off as social necessity and clinking glasses turned into something a little heavier. Yeah, but you know, those state dinners provided a lot of free alcohol. Mm -hmm. And it was with one of those state dinners that you met Lisa. Mm -hmm. Lisa. Handful that one. Two hands in your case. The whole Lisa thing just seemed a little too good to be true. She was discreet. She kept her mouth shut, and she had no interest in using you for political gain. But it seems that when she finally did decide that she didn't like the way she'd been treated, she is the kind of person who doesn't seem to care about how much damage she does to her own reputation as long as you go there. That expose she published last month on your history was particularly inspiring to your opponent's voters for the next upcoming election. I mean, don't have to deface a war hero who kills their own squad mates, they can automatically be ridiculed. So, now you're here, asking me to salvage the life that you've built up for yourself. A life built on murder. Adultery. Lies. Alcoholism. <laughs> Just my type. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is something I can do for you. So, you know what I can do. The question is, are you prepared to give me what I want? I have taken the liberty of already drafting a contract. I think you'll find it satisfactory. It covers everything we've been discussing. Your life, uh, the condition, our conditions, the boon to be acquired, all it needs is your signature. So. What do you say? Do, do we, we have, have a deal? deal? 